re flatten and they are we, we may also call leaf like okay point number one another important characteristic is that most of them except some few like cystosoma they are hermaphroditic that means there is no male or there is no female the each individual contain a single uh, a, a single each individual contain both the reproductive organ okay then usually the life cycle is indirect of course there are some direct life cycle that monogenia which we have discussed in the previous class but we will omit out right now and we the the parasites what we have discussed under digenia under the trematoda they are mostly in direct life cycle okay so under this platyhelminths we are having three class one is trematoda which we have discussed in the previous class under this one there are two subclass one is monogenia another one is digenia one is monogenia and another one is digenia okay then in the next in the in today's class we'll talk about the eusistoda and cotyloda okay so these are generally known as schistor that means they are tape one then okay in case of the tape one as i, I have mentioned here there are two uh, there are two class that is one is um, eusistoda which are known as two tape one another one is cotyloda which are also known as false or fish tape one or pseudo tape one okay here and that is uh, eusistoda we will talk about uh, their general characteristic their general morphology in brief and their general uh, life cycle in brief okay so let's come to see here here in case of schistoda uh, or eusistoda these are as i have said they are known as a true type one one thing that is really really important uh, word to note is that means it is that the parasites they are without alimentary canal okay the first point i would like to mention here of course this is not in chronology but i would like to mention here is that the parasites are without alimentary canal point number one let's compare with trematode in case of a trematode i'm going back to the slides i'm going back to the slides here okay or here let's see in case of trematode they are having blind suck intestinal cica they are having blind suck one and two they are having blind suck intestinal cica but in case of eusistoda they do not have elementary canal in case of trematoda the mode of absorption of nutrients is through one is through their mouth another one is through their tegument that means absorption but in case of eusistoda uh, in general <coughs> irrespective of eusistoda or cotyloda the nutrients are absorbed through their tegumens only point number one another thing that i would like to where is my pointer Another thing that I would like to mention here is that proclotid contains one or two set of a reproductive organ. Okay, so these things I'll explain to you once again. If you see the general morphology, there will be a scolex, that means a head which is connected with, you know all these things, which is connected with a neck region. These pictures we will see in the next slide neck region and a segment known as proclotids. So a collection of proclotids is known as strobila. Okay, so what are the, uh, the body components? One is the head or the scolex or the neck or the growth region and the proclotids, which are the segments. Okay, so the proclotids are collectively known as strobila. The proglotids sometimes function as a single organism. Okay, so the thing is, the head or the scolex is armed with sucker or hooks. The head and scolex is just for the attachment in the 
location uh, in where they locate where the parasite locates it is just for the attachment okay so the proglottid contain sometimes one or two set of reproductive organ okay i want to say here uh, is that it's proglottid is functioning as a single individual organism that means they the the proglottid is having when the proglottid is having a single reproductive organ that means there could be a reproduction okay number one number two is proglottid is ob absorbing or uh, obtaining its nutrients from the environment that means the the, the proglottid doesn't require any other proglottids for nutrition but in case of a trematode there will be a long tube right so the here these parasites they are very very primitive in their evolutionary biology that means they are older much much older and they are simple or they are simple in their uh, in their body organization also okay i'm going to the next slide here this is the morphology pictorial I have chosen very very simple one so that it is easy to understand. One is one is the head or the scolex, with the scolex would contain one will be the hooks. The scolex is com and another one is sucker. As I told you that the suckers and the hooks these are just for attachment. There is no metabolic importance of the scolex. Point number one. Number two, the next structure is the neck. Okay, neck. This is just a growth region. Okay, so that means from where a new proclotid will emerge and the older one will be growing or pushing. Okay, point number two. Number three is that the segment is, its segment is known as proclotid. So the collection of a proclotid is known as strobila, what I told you. Okay, so these are the, the the younger ones are the ones which are nearing to the neck and the older one which are known as uh, which are known as um, i mean which are away from the scolex are mature one or the okay so here what do i mean by mature proclitics i mean to say here is that the mature proclitics are those where the male and female reproductive organs are fully functional. In terms of parasitology, whenever we talk about, not only in terms of parasitology, in terms of life science, whenever we talk about mature, that means they are fully functional. There should be fully functional reprodu reproductive organ. Okay, so here, next to the mature proglottid is that we, we have one gravid proglottid. Gravid proglottid means after the mature proglottids, uh, that means the mature proglottids, they contain fully functional reproductive organ. That means they can fertilize each to each other. The male and female will fertilize to each other. Then what is the next stage? After the after fertilization, the male reproductive organ and the female reproductive organ subsequently disintegrate and the remaining portion is the the only remaining portion is the mm, the uterus which contains the eggs only or sometimes the free eggs only in the in the proglottids okay so this is known as gravid proglottid okay so i'm just repeating in the in the mm, morphology there will be a descollex, which will be which will contain hooks and suckers. The hooks and suckers are merely for their attachment, not for the metabolic important. Okay, number one. Number two, the neck or growth region. From where the new one, the new proglottids will grow, the older one will be further pushed out, and the new one will replace here, and this will be pushed, and this will be pushing towards the terminal portion and the new one will be go growing and growing okay point number two number three is that there are a segment known as proglottids the collection of a proglottids are known as strobila okay so the
colleagues, mm, the matured one. That means which contain fully functional reproductive organ, which contain fully functional reproductive organ. Subsequently, after the male and female reproductive organ, they fertilize to each other and the organ, the reproductive organ disintegrate. And the, the proglottid is filled merely with eggs. Okay, what is very obvious here is that, you see at the beginning of the class, I told you, in the first class, I told you that the intention of a parasite is to reproduce, not by nerve, not to develop nervous system, not to develop uh, extensive digestive system, not to develop extensive muscular system or such and such. Okay, so their main intention is to reproduce. Right. So here, this is the drawing of the the proglottid. That means the mature proglottid. Here, there will be male reproductive organ, which these are the male reproductive organ. These are known as testes, and there will be female reproductive organ like the ovary and the the this is the genital pore, of course. Then there will be uterus. Okay. So the uterus modifications and the uterus structures of parasites of a cystoid is important for their uh, species identification. These things we will talk about later on. Okay. So coming to the life cycle, once the gravid proglottids. Okay, I'm just going back. Once the gravid proglottids develop, sometimes the in depending on the parasites the eggs are released continuously through the eggs are released continuously through a genital pore okay this is known as a pore or oh, this is known as pseudo -apolysis. sometimes the, the gravid proglottids all these things are written down in the note okay sometimes the gravid proglottids just disintegrate and it will release the eggs or, or sometimes the gravid proglottids are, uh, are are releasing the eggs through a genital pore. All these things I have written down in the note. Some are they are apolysis. Okay, if the gravid proglottids release the eggs from the genital pore, that is the known as pseudo apolysis. If the gravid proglottids disintegrate and releasing the egg, that is known as apolysis. Okay, so after the egg is released, the 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 structure of the um, in many parasites, in many trematodes, the egg is infected. How does it differ with the trematode? Trematode, let's go back okay. here from the the egg, which is embryonated okay and which will subsequently develop into a merasidia this time the span of time is around around 14 days okay they require around 14 days here or they require that means two weeks but here in this case in case of a cystod they would require they would not require any period of development many a time that the eggs which are laid down is fully infected. Okay, so the difference between trematode egg and cystode egg is that I'm going back again. In case of a trematode, the egg is having an operculum. That means there is a cap over, there is a cap, this is the operculum. There is a cap over the uh, egg in one pole, but here in this case, there is no such structure, but the Uniqueness is that the parasite, the egg is containing hooks. Usually, these are not; uh, these are six numbers. That means three pairs of hooks are within the egg. Okay, so this is very very unique, and one, and this is the um, key identification point for Eusystoda. Okay. 
And another one is, I'm not going to um, discuss in detail, I'm just going to give you some idea about the structure of the egg. The innermost portion will contain the embryo, which contains six hooks, or this is known as hexagon embryo, and which will be protected by a very, very resistant material known as embryo four. This much will be sufficient for you. Okay, coming to the life cycle, if you see the life cycle, I told you that except monogenia, the parasites under platyhelminthes are indirect life cycle. That means they require certain intermediate host. They require certain intermediate host for their propagation, for their development in the environment outside of the host. Okay, so the life cycle, there, of course, there are one or two systems which are uh, having direct life cycle like Hymenolepis, Diminuta, and all this. But I told you that this biology or life science is a science of exception. There will be exception all the time. But if you see the general consensus that the parasites usually under phylum platyhelminths are having an indirect life cycle, they would require one or two hosts. That means they would require one or two intermediate hosts apart from their definitive host. Okay, so the stage, the intermediate stage in the intermediate host, in case of a trematode, we call them as metacystone. We call it as a metacystone. So what are those metacystone? Let's discuss one by one, and this is important. And many a times we ask one or two in exam. Usually short notes or some definition point, I mean, to some explanation in one or two words, I mean, one or two sentence. The first one is cystisarcoid. Cystisarcoid, this, this is the cystisarcoid. Okay, cystisarcoid is a solid body metacystone. It is not a bladder, uh, it is not a fluid field. It is a, please note down all these things, okay? It is a solid body metacystone containing single invaginated scolex. Single non-invaginated scolex. I, uh, I'm repeating, it is a solid body metacystone. This is a solid body metacystone containing single non-invaginated scolex. Okay, so what do I mean by non-invaginated scolex? This is the scolex. This is the scolex. The scol scolex is pointing out towards the cortical portion of the, uh, the, the the metacystone. Okay, it doesn't point towards the, um, the, the center of the uh, medullary portion of the uh, metacystone or the, the round structure. It is pointing away from the, um, from the center. Okay, so this is known as a solid body metacystone containing a single non-invaginated scolex. Example is, we will, uh, like uh, the parasites under there, like the base, uh, like monesia, like anoplocephala, monesia, which are a uh, tapeworm of ruminants, monesia benedini, monesia expansa, and anoplocephala uh, parfolieta, which is the tapeworm of horse. Number one. Number two, cystisarcas. Cystic sarcas is not a solid body metacystone. It is a fluid filled bladder containing single invaginated scolex. This is the cystic sarcas. Okay, so this, this is the scolex of the tapeworm. Okay, the, uh, these are the, actually the larval stage, larval stage. Okay, so here the scolex is pointing towards the medullary portion or the, the in center of the uh, bladder, so the, this is known as single invaginated scolex in a fluid filled bladder. Okay, here I would like to say is this parasite, cystis darkas, which is the tape, which is the metacystone stage or which is the intermediate stage of tinea solium. This is very, very, very important, especially in India, Southeast Asia, and Latin Americas. They can, they, you have heard, I think so. You have heard about the neurocystis sarcosis. Okay, so usually tapeworms they are not pathogenic. 
surprising, right? Usually they bomb what then why we are studying the in 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 in, in pro in herpetology class. The thing is the adult parasites they are not pathogenic, but the metacystot are. But the metacystot are pathogenic. Okay, so here human being of course we we, we can act as an intermediate host if we happen to ingest the egg of a uh, tenia solium inside us in the muscle or in the neural tissue nervous system if the metacystol develop then there will be uh, there will be uh, cystisarcosis which is caused by cystisarcas of tenia solium okay so this bladder could cause paralysis and seizures and epilepsy in human being all right so cystisarcas means it is a fluid filled bladder containing single invaginated collects. The next one is sinuras. What is my pointer? The next one is sinuras. Sinuras is nothing similar. It is very, very similar with cysticercus, except that it is a fluid-filled bladder containing multiple invaginated collects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight okay so they contain this is a fluid filled bladder containing multiple invaginated squares okay this is for uh, tenia multiceps tenia multiceps next one is strobilosarcus strobilosarcus is a Solid body metacystote. I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Strobilus is a, um, it, it resembles the adult parasites. It resembles the adult parasites that they contain a single evaginated scolex. Okay, that means they, they resemble the, they contain the scolex and they contain the head and they contain the proglottids. But these proglottids are not functional. That means in terms of reproduction. Of course, they would be required for, you know, for the nutrition, the proglottids. But uh, as it is larval stage, the none of the proglottids are reproductive active. Reproduct, they they are not active reproductive. Okay, in their reproductive organ. Okay. The next one is uh, Strobella sarcas is for. Uh, uh, like in case of meta mesocystoides. Okay, so mesocystoides. The next one is tetrathyridium. The, the picture I have not put here. Tetrathyridium is a solid body metacystoid containing a single invaginated scolex. It is a elongated solid body. Sorry, sorry. Where is my pointer? This elongated solid body metacystoid containing a deeply invaginated scolex, something like this. Elongated, this is the scolex. This elongated solid body metacystor containing deeply invaginated single scolex. This is also found in case of mesocystoides. Okay, so here, in case of mesocystoides, they would require two types of... In case of mesocystoides, they would require two types of... Uh, 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 intermediate host okay one is the first intermediate host would contain cc sarcoid and the second intermediate host would contain tetrathyridium okay in case of strobilosarcus as i told you that they are resembling the adult parasites okay so this is for the case of tenia teniformis tenia teniformis all these things i of course the, the spellings and all this i've written down in the note okay the last one and very very important is hydrogen okay we often ask in the exam short notes what is hydrogen hydrogen is a fluid filled bladder containing a daughter cyst its daughter cyst would contain multiple invaginated scolex okay so this is the bladder which contain a daughter cyst this daughter cyst would contain multiple invaginated scolex. So this is the germinal membrane. This is the germinal membrane of the 
hydrated cheese wall. From here, from the germinal membrane, the daughter cheese arise. Okay, so once it develops the once the metas the what should I say? The scolex are developed and we call it as brood capsule, brooding. B R O O D. We call it as brood capsule. Okay, so the brood capsule sometimes can detach from the wall of the germinal membrane. At that time, we call it as hydrated sand. S A N D. Hydrated sand. Okay, this is for the case of Echinococcus granulosus. Okay, now let's see. This is the cystic sarcoid, as I told you, that this you can find in mistly pork. That means the these are the this white one in the bladder, these are the scolex. These are the scolex and these are the bladder. Okay. So here the this is for the case of pork, pig muscle. Here the thing is <clears throat> if the pig is infested, I mean infected with cystic sarcas, the name of the pork is known as misli pork. Okay, if it is beef, misli beef. Okay, so this is the single invaginated scolex in the fluid filled bladder. Okay, this is the hydrated cyst. Okay, the, there was one case, the in a liver of a man, they have drawn out the liters and liters of hydrated fluid from his liver. He was infected with hydrated, okay, this uh, the kind of a granulosus infection. Okay, these, these are the cysts. If you peel off the covering, you can find a very, very large uh, cysts which are filled with fluid. The fluid would contain, just like this one, this is the brood capsule. This is the brood capsule. Okay, so these are the daughter cysts. This is the hydrated sand. These are the hydrated sand if they are occurring, if they detach from the brood capsule, I mean, from the germinal membrane. Okay. So for five minutes, we'll talk about the pseudotapon, and then we will wind up. Okay. Another one is, apart from, uh, another group is, or in the class of toxic taxonomy is pseudotape worm or false tape worm or fish tape worm, F I S H. Okay, so why they are called as false tape worm? It is that they are mm, they are containing they are not containing uh, hooks or suckers in the scolex. Rather, they contain weak narrow muscular groove. Okay, this is known as botria. Point number one. Point number two, as I told you that there is a polysis in case of um, in case of Eusystoda. What is the meaning? The gravid proclotid release or the gravid proclotid disintegrate the the the, the gravid proclotid disintegrate the it is disintegrated and thereby releasing the eggs it contains. Okay, here in this case, in case of Botria, uh, Cotyloda, the gravid proglotid would release the egg from um, the uterine pore continuously, then, thereby, subsequently, maybe 10 gravid proglotids would disintegrate altogether. Okay. The next point is that the egg is operculated, just like trematode. They are many times, sometimes difficult to differentiate what, whether this is trematode egg or cotyloda egg. Of course, there are points of differentiation that we, when we talk about in the uh, systemic part, we will discuss. But for now, in case of trematode, the egg is operculated. In case of cystode, the egg is presented with hooks six hooks or three pairs of hooks. In case of pseudotape one or cotyloda, the egg is presented with operculum. Okay, so this is the, this is the botria. I hope you can see this is the long muscular group, which is for attachment. Okay, this is the, mm, the gravity, this is the proglotid which contain 
the rosette shape of the uterus and the ovary in the medial portion. Very, very unique. None this kind of structures you will not find in case of Eusistoda, but in case of Cotyloda, the, the reproductive organs, especially the female reproductive organs, come together in the center of the proclotids and they look like a chain, one, two, three, like this, a series of dark structures you can see. Morphology also, morphologically also you can see in, in your naked eye, I mean, you can see the this kind of um, darkenings or thickening structures. Okay, so in the life cycle, there are usually two intermediate hosts that are required. One is usually water uh, arthropods, aquatic arthropods. Okay, inside the aquatic arthropods, the first intermediate stage is developed. Where is my pointer? Okay, sorry. The first intermediate stage that will develop this is known as prosarcoid, and subsequently, that means this is the. Then subsequently, the pleurosarcoid would develop. This is the in the second intermediate host. Let's explain now. In case of a uh, this is the adult. But In case of um, Cotyloda, the egg does require, the egg requires a certain period of time in water for their development into the next stage, known as Coracidium. In case of Trimatod, we call it as Miracidium, which is certain triangular and ciliated structure, known as Miracidium. In case of a Trimatod, I mean, in case of Cotyloda, we call it as Coracidium, C-O-R-A, Coracidium. So if the Corostidium enters on water crustacean, okay, I mean, water arthropod, okay, like cyclops, okay, then they would develop into the first stage of the first in metasis thought stage known as prosarcoid. What is the prosarcoid? Prosarcoid is, prosarcoid is solid body metasis thought which bears hooks, which bears hooks at the posterior portion. Okay, this occurs in the first intermediate host. Okay, so if this cyclops is ingested by fish, okay, so it will develop into, inside the fish, it will develop into pleurosarcoid, which is a solid body metacystor, which contains the collection of an adult. If fish is eaten by human being, and, uh, and or bear or fox or uh, any wild felines, they will complete the life cycle. Okay, so here the first intermediate host is known as cyclops, water arthropod. I told you that in that they would develop prosarcoid, and in the second intermediate host, they would develop um, pleurosarcoid. Okay, so this is the pictorial representation. Okay, so in human being, in bear, in wild felines, and in felines, and in canines, the the parasite resides in the small intestine. I mean, in the let's say for now, let's say in the intestine. Okay, so which is which lays an operculated edge? You can see here. Okay, so it would when it comes in the into the water, it would require sometimes certain period of time for development into uh, first larval stage, known as coracidium. If coracidium is ingested by the if coracidium is ingested by the cyclops or um, water arthropods, and it will develop into the first metacystor known as prosarcoid. If Cyclops is ingested by fish and it will develop into pleurosarcoid, which is the second intermediate host 
So when the second intermediate host is eaten by, the definitive host and the cycle completes. So very, very simple. In the next class, we will talk about the um, parasites and the nematelventis. Okay, so here I would like to mention here one thing again is that the parasites, they are uh, having an indirect life cycle with emphasis of their reproduction. Their emphasis is on their reproduction. They are very primitive in their in terms of their mode of digestion. In terms of absorption of their nutrients, they do not require any sophistications. They just need to, uh, th that means their tegumen is metabolically active. That means they just uh, absorb nutrients through their tegumen, through their surrounding and the single proglottids function as a single organism that means they would require they, that means they are having a uh, fully functional both male and female reproductive organ and in addition to that one also as there is no alimentary canal of course there is excretory canal but as there is no alimentary canal or the as it is very primitive form of nutrition even if one proglottid detach from the rest of the proglottid, there is no harm. Okay, so with that one, we complete the, uh, the general description about the, the platyhelminthes. Okay, so I will send you the, the differentiation and the certain notes regarding trematodes, and I will 